So today I have 11 ingredients for you for gesture. And you know what, normally, let's say you have 10 out of 11. That's pretty good, that's like about 90% or so, right? Normally when you're 90% of the way there with something, you can really see it, like you're getting close. In figure drawing, you know, with these 11 ingredients, if you're missing one, the drawings still might not look the way you want them to. They might look far from how you want them to look. But the good news is you don't need to be really advanced or perfect on all of these 11 things. You just need to have something in place for each of them. So the first two ingredients should sound pretty familiar if you saw our last video, but it bears going over quickly one more time. Gesture isn't just, in my opinion, about big flowing curves that you just feel without any sense of what's going on in the structure, right? So the first ingredient is having an idea of what the important landmarks of the figure are and then being able to see where they are and see how they relate to each other, right? Because otherwise you're just getting infinite, like a bazillion photons of light coming off this figure into your eyes. So much detail, so much information. It's so much more straightforward and simple when you can boil it down to a few important points. And one characteristic of gesture is that simplicity and clarity. So important landmarks like the aces points, the bony points on the front of the pelvis, the sternum, how far down is that rib cage coming? Like in the last video we talked about, those collarbones. For the head, you can look at the brow line, how it relates to the top of the ear and get a sense of that cranium and whether it's tilted back or tilted forward and stuff like that. Once you notice these fundamental ideas, you can start to get a sense of the major forms in the figure. How is the rib cage oriented? So this is the second ingredient, is understanding the big forms, and that's helped when you can see the landmarks, which is that first ingredient. So then when you can see that rib cage and pelvis, you can see, oh, this side's all squashed up. There's a fold here. This side is all stretched out. Oh, the head is on this angle, and so I'm gonna draw the head off on that angle. And when you don't get these ideas, when you don't see the squash and stretch clearly, when you don't get the head on its angle correctly, things easily get straightened out. And so actually, I think when you have this kind of clarity, when you see the structure and the, and the forms, you can make your figures more dynamic. Often you think it makes things stiff. I think if you see with that clarity, you can get those angles and that tension between the squashing side and the stretching side, and you can add more dynamism. Now, I'm not saying that a gesture drawing should be like an anatomy study where you're really painstakingly mapping out, you know, all the little anatomical things that's happening, but an intuitive sense of the major anatomical forms and how they relate is central to the gesture drawing. Now, the third ingredient is about proportions, intuitive proportions. So you don't need to like map things out painstakingly and get things super accurate. But the thing is, if things are really way off, if they're way out of proportion, it's gonna distract from the gesture or dilute the gesture, right? So for example, often people make that midsection between the rib cage and pelvis too long. And I talked about the importance of the squash and stretch. If you make that too long, the squash side is less squashed, right? Because it's just been stretched out on the squash side. And that dilutes that tension between the squash side and the stretch side of the torso. Another thing is very often people will make their head a bit big, make their hips and legs too small, and that seems to undermine the gesture. If you're gonna go, you don't need to be accurate, you just need to be wrong in the right direction. So what you can do is go for a head that's roughly about the right size or a bit small, but not too big, for legs that are roughly the right length or a bit long, but not too short. And even though you can go a little bit long, don't go super long because then it's just gonna be distracting. So there's definitely a range of error you can be in there, but you don't wanna be uh, getting things too short in the legs or too big in the head, and you don't wanna go way outside of that range. So the next thing is CSI. Not that one, this one. Just C-shaped curves, S-shaped curves, and straight lines. Now this isn't a rule. None of these are rules, right? I'm making this sound like a bunch of rules, but it's not about rules, it's about guidelines because gesture is hard to get to. And so it's nice to have some specific steps to get there. And so one really nice idea is this limiting your marks to C-shaped curves, S-shaped curves, and straight lines. It means the most complex mark you're ever gonna put down is an S-shaped curve. It will encourage you to 
draw straight through irrelevant details. And it's really hard to let go of those details, but when you can only use CSI marks, that helps. Now, what you don't want to do is use a million CSI marks. You want to use maybe, I don't know, 15 up to 30 CSI marks. That's, these are numbers that you don't need to kind of really restrict yourself to. But I feel like that is a really nice exercise, actually. When you say, I'm going to use max 12 lines, for example, that is really going to push you to draw through irrelevant information and find the things that really matter. I tend to find that for a lot of the gesture drawings I do, there might be like 30 marks on them. One other tool, aside from limiting how many marks or the types of marks you use, is a time limit. So that is going to make sure that you're decisive uh, and that you're not getting lost in detail as you're doing these drawings. Now, I think often people misuse these by putting a time limit on and then panicking and just trying to rush through it and put as many marks down as possible, trying to basically draw in their normal way, but quicker. When you have a time limit, you need to slow down and draw less. That's your only hope. So if you have two minutes, say, but you're only going to make 30 marks, that's four seconds. The math is still there per mark. So that's plenty of time to make all the marks you need for your drawing. Even if you have one minute, you've got two seconds per mark. That's a leisurely pace. The fifth ingredient is finding asymmetry. So a lot of what makes gesture is the relationship between the two sides of the forms. So like the squash and stretch in the torso, it's that tension between the nice stretched out smoother side and then the sharp angle change on the squash side. And those two sides play off against each other and it creates a lot of visual interest. If they were symmetrical, it would be way less gestural. Another nice relationship between the two sides is a straight line against the curve. There's like this real simplicity and kind of clarity of the straight line and then more fluidity on the curved side. Another really nice form of asymmetry is offset curves. So symmetrical curves are not good, but when you have those curves offset against each other, they create a really nice asymmetrical dynamic. So the sixth ingredient is to have some standard pre-prepared curves and then some post-specific curves. So the standard pre-prepared ones are like, you know they're going to be there. So they give you a head start. You see the, the, a straight leg from the side, you're naturally going to find that S-shaped curve down the front of it. If you see a straight leg from the front, you're going to find offset curves going down the sides of it. And then you can add pose specific curves, like big flowing curves that happen to be created by that pose. So the seventh ingredient is surface lines, cross contour lines or wrapping lines. Now often a gestural curve is a big long curve, right? So when you have an arm, you might have a big long curve to capture the gesture of that arm. When something is really foreshortened, the edges on the outline of it become short, right? It's all foreshortened. And so it's not a nice big long line anymore. But we can find a big long curve now wrapping around the form. That becomes the long curve. So you can still put those lines down around the, uh, the outline of the form, but now you can add those big surface lines, those cross contour lines, and they're going to provide a lot of gesture while also clarifying the forms. Another really nice thing is they tell us the direction, right? They tell us how that form is coming towards us and changing directions is part of the dynamism of the pose and therefore of the gesture. So the eighth ingredient is a mark making strategy. Now, I think that a lot of people think that this is all they need, right? When they see someone doing the gestural drawings, it must just be all about this. But this is just one out of the 11, right? But it is important. So. For me, my mark making strategy for most of my gestural drawings is to use an overhand grip, use a pencil that is sharpened to have quite a long bit of the lead exposed with a little bit of a tapering to it, and then use smooth newsprint. And then I can put down all kinds of different marks that way, and that helps me to capture the gesture the way I want to. That is one of many mark making strategies. You can use a brush pen, you can use all kinds of different materials and stuff like that. But it's good to basically find the gesture drawings that you love the most. They could be digital, they could be with brush, they could be with whatever. Find the artist whose gesture drawings you really love and just start off by matching their strategy. 
what kind of grip do they use, how do they get the pencil ready, or what kind of brush pen or whatever are they using, and mimic that. So the ninth ingredient is the risk mindset. Now, my head always goes to this scene from Indiana Jones. You can't see where the line is, can't see where the path is. It's got to just step out onto it and hope that it's there. Now, Indiana Jones could have fallen down there. There might not have been a path there, right? And that's going to happen when you're doing your gesture drawings. Fortunately, you're not going to die, so it's okay, right? So just keep taking that step that Indiana Jones takes with every mark. Don't be like, oh my God, this has to be safe. This has to be okay. The drawing has to not fail here. You're not gonna fall down into an endless pit. It's just gonna be, oh, I just do another drawing. It's okay. So take that risk with every mark. Do it like you're confident about it. Do it like you mean it, even though you're not actually sure it's gonna work. Now the 10th ingredient is a sheer quantity of practice. You can understand all of these ideas, but don't expect yourself to sit down on day one or day two or day three and just be able to push out a bunch of fantastic gesture drawings. It is a muscle memory thing. So you can understand the theory on like at the end of this video, but it's going to take a long time to get to those gestural drawings. And hopefully with this video, you've understood that actually it's built on some anatomical know-how. It's built on some ability with simple forms. There's a lot to it. You need to have a good intuitive sense of proportions and all of these things take time to build, right? It's, you're, you're putting these bricks in place brick by brick and you need to build that wall quite a bit before it's gonna really translate into fantastic gesture drawings. So you gotta give yourself that time. Give yourself time to make lots of failed drawings, as long as you're working on these ideas and on these skills and not just mindlessly, you know, drawing inside your comfort zone, but really trying to push towards building these 11 ingredients, building ingredients, the analogy is completely fallen apart, but you know what I mean, this takes time to so give yourself that quantity of practice. So the 11th secret ingredient is a bit vague, but I think it's really important. It's allow yourself to be confident if you've done that quantity of practice, if you've worked on all of these skills, at some point you're gonna to have to think to yourself, you know what, I am good at this, I can do this, I'm confident about what I'm doing. That confidence is really useful when you're putting down these gestural marks, but you have to allow yourself to believe that, right? If you've done all these other bits of work that I've described, you then have to allow yourself to be confident. Now, we as artists are often so self-critical and we don't wanna be arrogant or whatever. We don't wanna seem delusional. We don't wanna appear like we think we're good at stuff. So we'll be really self-critical and self-deprecating. But to get those beautiful gestural curves requires you to think, you know what? I know what I'm doing here and I'm awesome at this and I can do this. It makes a huge difference. And when you have that confidence, the marks have that confidence and then the viewer's eyes are gonna enjoy that confidence. It feels, it's, it's strange, but it is an ingredient all by itself. And it is built by doing the work and doing the practice. It's not just based on nothing, but you also have to take that step of actually giving yourself that confidence. So if you really wanna work on your skills of bringing things down to their fundamental forms, seeing that squash and stretch intuitively, simplifying while still recognizing that structure, bringing out those surface lines. We designed the Fresh Eyes Challenge specifically for that. So it's 10 days and it is transformative for your drawings if you work through it. Now I'm gonna run that challenge in January live so we can do it together. We'll do new live streams for it. Got some new poses to do it. So even if you've already done it, it's worth revisiting and we're gonna go through it all together in January. So if you want to join in with that, make sure you're signed up to our community. It's free to join. The Fresh Eyes Challenge is in there and make sure you're on our newsletter. And that way I'll you know, give you all the links and the information and stuff and we can go through this challenge together. It's going to be a really, really great way to start off the new year. If you want to learn more about gesture drawing, check out the video on the screen. It'll give you all the things you need to look for in any pose.